Hey guys, thanks for watching and today I am going to be merging several of my interests such as drums and percussion, music and in particular using those as a way to support my teaching in regard to cardiovascular examination. So today I am going to be talking about the cardiac cycle and in particular the auscultation of heart sound. So auscultation is where we take the stethoscope, place it on a patient's chest and we listen to heart sounds. So what you can usually hear if you were to just place your ear against your partner's chest or um, if you're having a, a cuddle with one of your kids, you can hear the heartbeat in, your, in their chest. So as clinicians, we listen to that and we can get a good idea as to the uh, health or ill health in regard to the structures of the heart. So we're going to start by looking at some very basic cardiac anatomy. Uh, we don't need to go into tons of detail there, and we're not going to go into the electroconductivity of the heart. It's just the physical mechanisms of the heart. So we'll be looking at that, uh, revising in particular the four valves that control the flow of blood in one particular direction through the heart. We are then going to relate that to the cardiac cycle, so the way that the heart contracts and relaxes, and how that therefore relates to what we can hear as we place our stethoscope on the patient's chest. Uh, because we're listening to not only the sounds, but also the spaces between the sounds, because we can relate those to the main components of the cardiac cycle. After that, then we'll move into some really basic music theory, and don't be put off by that because I think that that will be a really nice sort of creative way to support the clinical side of things. Because in my experience, one of the main barriers that I think people come across in regard to learning heart auscultation is not so much the theoretical component, but it's that application in practice. Uh, for example, if you're on a busy hospital ward with loads of noises, it's not necessarily the, the right environment to be able to tune your ear into the specifics of what you're listening to. Also, I think one of the common um, problems that people face is hearing the sounds of the heart kind of back to front. So you need to be able to tune your ear into that rhythm uh, in order to understand what you're listening to. And given that it is a rhythm, we're going to relate that to samba drumming in particular because the, the the heartbeat of samba or latin drumming that you hear in things like the bossa nova well that is almost identical to what we hear in the rhythm of these heart valves so without further delay i'm going to get into our cardiac anatomy so you can see this diagram here where we've got just our normal cardiac structures so we have our four main chambers of the heart We've got our left and right atrium. So as we're looking at the diagram, the patient's right is on our left. So it's as though we're actually looking at our patient. So we have our left and right atrium. Our right atrium drains deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body. And our left atrium drains oxygenated blood from the lungs. Now, our ventricles as well are separated from the atrium by two valves. So on the right-hand side, the patient's right, we have the tricuspid valve. And then on the patient's left, we have the mitral valve. They're referred to as the atrioventricular valves because they separate the atrium and the ventricles. The ventricles themselves, then, we have our left ventricle that is responsible for ejecting blood into the aorta and towards the rest of the body whereas our right ventricle is responsible for ejecting blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, and that sends deoxygenated blood into the lungs before it loops back round that pulmonary circuit. That leaves us with one valve remaining that we haven't named, and that is the aortic valve on the left-hand side. Now, what we're listening to as we auscultate our patient's chest is the closure of each of these valves. Now we have four valves and only two main uh, physiological sounds. That's because each of these valves closes at the same time as its pair. So for example, the tricuspid and mitral valves, they work in one pair and they make one of these heart sounds, just as the pulmonary and aortic valves close as a pair and they make up the other heart sound. And so we can relate these heart sounds to the cardiac cycle, that we know that we have a period of relaxation where the atria themselves refill with blood, and that that's followed by atrial con contraction, 
which pumps that blood from the atria into the ventricle. We then have this period of contraction of the ventricles, and that is when we eject blood from the ventricles through the great vessels of the heart. And it's this cycle of relaxation and contraction that we refer to as diastole and systole. In this context, by systole, we're referring to contraction of the ventricles alone, and diastole captures that contraction of the atria. So we can break that cardiac cycle into those two main sections that we have diastole and systole. So how do we relate that to our heart sounds? Well, we can listen to heart sound one, which is our closure of the tricuspid and mitral valves simultaneously. And so as those valves snap shut, that's due to the increased pressure within the ventricles during systole. So that snapping shut of the tricuspid and mitral valves, that denotes the beginning of systole. And so as the ventricle contracts and then the atria refill with blood and squeeze the blood back into the ventricles ready to start systole all over again, well, we get the snapping shut of the pulmonary and aortic valves, which tells us that is the end of systole. And there we have heart sound one, which is the beginning of systole, that closure of the tricuspid and mitral valves, and heart sound two, and that denotes the end of systole, and therefore the beginning of diastole. So heart sound two, end of systole, well, that's the closure of our aortic and pulmonary valves. And there we have that whole cardiac cycle that continues on and on again. One of the common tools that we use to help students to tune their ears into what they're hearing is by using an onomatopoeic term, this lub-dub. So we hear lub-dub, 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 lub-dub. So that's our heart sound one, the lub, which is the closure of the tricuspid and mitral valves. And we have the dub, which is heart sound two, which is that snapping shut of our pulmonary and aortic valve. And as you can imagine, what we're listening for is not only the sounds themselves, but that those sounds help us to uh, imagine or picture in our minds what that cardiac cycle is doing. And we can identify the sounds and then the spaces between them. So we know that the space between the lub and the dub, heart sound one and two, the space between that is systole. And therefore, the space after that, until we hear heart sound one again, well, that is diastole. So as with all of our examinations, we need to be able to understand what is considered normal. So what, what do we expect in a healthy patient? Well, we can expect to hear heart sound one and two with no additional sounds. And once we understand that and once we're able to identify that across a range of patients, well, we can start to identify where we can hear abnormal sounds. And by identifying those abnormal sounds, well, we can identify their timing. And it's the timing around heart sound one and two. Well, that helps us understand, is it a systolic sound or is that extra sound heard during diastole? And there's two really good examples with this. Well, there's heart sound three, which occurs early in diastole. Now, this is an interesting one because it can be heard in healthy young athletes, but in a pathological context, it's heard mainly in people with heart failure. It's thought to be caused by a sloshing around in the left ventricle of excess blood that isn't ejected completely during systole. So we get this third sound just after heart sound two, and it's referred to as a gallop. And it's in particular, it's got the same rhythm or cadence as the word Kentucky. So instead of just hearing blood dub, blood dub, blood dub, we hear Kentucky, 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 where the Ken and the Tu are the lub and the dub, so that's heart sound one and two, with the E sound being that third heart sound. Let's have a listen.
feel free to play that back a few times if you want to make sure that you're able to hear what those sounds are and identify heart sound one and two with that third heart sound being that the final syllable of that Kentucky gallop. And then we can move into heart sound four. Now heart sound four is described as being late in diastole, which means actually it's a little confusing when you listen to it clinically because when you tune your ears into it, what you actually hear is a sound just before heart sound one, whereas it actually, it's late in diastole. And it has a different cadence again, another gallop type rhythm, but instead of the Kentucky rhythm, we get a lub lub dub, lub lub dub, lub lub dub, lub lub dub. So it sounds as if it's just before heart sound one. Let's have a listen to a recording again and see if you can identify it. able to hear that blub blub dub, blub blub dub, blub blub dub in the recording. And the thing is, it's much easier in this controlled environment with recordings, with a heart rate at a reasonable sort of resting heart rate of about 60 BPM. It definitely gets a lot more difficult when patients are tachycardic and those sounds kind of blur into one, which is why it's so important to spend the time tuning your ear into being able to identify that heart sound one and two. That term lub dub, has been criticised for it being a bit kind of, are we dumbing things down? However, it is really useful to use that sort of onomatopoeic sound to help people find their, their root, find something that's accessible and tangible. And that's why I think that the, the drums and music then becomes really valuable, because if you can get your head around uh, the rhythm uh, and relate that to something, as I say, kind of more tangible, then to me, that just gives something that little bit more interesting and something a bit more concrete to be able to latch onto. Now, I'm not gonna go into loads of depth musically, but essentially, uh, in regard to music theory, well, most music can be broken down into four beats per, per measure, and usually that's how drumming works. So you'll be familiar with drummers counting in one, two, three, four, and then the music starts. You'll be used to dancing to music. Most Western music is in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it allows us to move smoothly to the, to the rhythm. And when you consider samba and Latin music, well, that's, that's no different. I mean, that's all about rhythm and dancing and enjoying ourselves. The subtle differences and how this relates to heart sounds um, is that, well, we still get that looked up, looked up. Look up, and that's formed by the, the bass drum, so the real kind of driving heartbeat of the music. You get that look up, look up. But what's interesting as a rhythm though, is that actually it starts on the dub. So rather than coming in with a one, two, three, four, look up, look up, it's not quite like that. And what we'll feel as we get to the end of this video, well, we'll feel the fact that the counting is one, two, three, four, dub, look up. Look up, look up. And that can be so useful for when we're listening to the heart because as I said before, it, when a patient's heart rate is 60 BPM, it's much easier to identify things than when you've got additional sounds or some tachycardia. And just something that helps you root yourself into that rhythm can be really useful. So what we can see on the screen now is a couple of measures and I'll play the beat so that you can hear that bass drum starting on the dub and then moving to lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And we'll hear heart sound one and two. So I'll play that now. And then from that, we can start to build in those other rhythms. So what I'll do is I'll cut to me playing the drums and there is a little graphic with the heart so that you can relate the, the bass drum sound and that rhythm to the cardiac cycle. You can see the valves opening and closing with the bass drum. I'll go through heart sound one and two, 
heart sound one and two plus three, heart sound one and two plus four, and then the whole thing together, just at a nice 60 BPM so that you can get a feel for how that music relates to relates to the cardiac cycle. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this last bit. This is as much for fun as it is for learning. Uh, and I hope you've all learned something. Please give the, the video a like if you enjoyed it and give me a subscribe for more cool content. Thank you.